Yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Filip Piazabelski from OpenGSP Asia Consortium and I will talk a little bit about the OGC initiatives in the marine environment and then switch to the uh, to the Iliad project which is a European project uh, that uh, is aiming to build the digital twin or digital twins of the ocean and uh, I'm not sure I will not talk too much about the standards actually uh, more how do we use them and uh, and what's the outcome what are the next steps and how can we how can we move forward and I'm happy to listen to your feedback on what we are doing wrong actually uh, especially uh, especially in the Iliad because federated marine spatial data infrastructure is the initiative that uh, the members are running so that's already good uh, so First of all, that just a reminder for those who don't know the uh, FMSDI uh, initiatives, that's uh, just in, in very brief outline. That was initiated uh, already two years ago, and uh, this is a multi-stage process uh, that was initiated because we understood that uh, the climate change and the marine environment is important, and we need to put more focus on that in the OGC. And thanks also to our sponsors that were um, pushing that and, uh, and put the resources, put the requirements for this FMSDI that was feasible to, to run it through these several years. And uh, the pilots will shift from place to place, as, uh, as you will see in a second. Uh, we started with very small uh, small incremental preparation. So actually the first stages were more about uh, getting the requirements of, for this FMSDI and uh, that helped to establish this marine domain working group uh, in the OGC uh, where, they, uh, where the members are defining the, the next steps and the vision of, the, of this marine development in the OGC. So then we went through the uh, discovery study I will not show you this one too much because that was already several years ago and we don't have time for, for everything. But uh, you, you, I will show you also the links to the, uh, to the resources that you can dive deeper in this, in this uh, uh, progress. Then the first pilot uh, was, was built uh, around the uh, IHO implementations and IHO integration with the OGC APIs and how can we use that, uh, what is used for, used for, and that also helped to establish this conversation with UNGM that uh, concluded in the roadmap uh, definition. So here you have the, I'm not sure, yeah, here you have the, uh, the paper that was published uh, together with IHO and GM, uh, how to, we should build this uh, spatial data inf infrastructure for this marine environment. And then there were two phases of the projects. Now this is the third or fourth one already. In the meantime, we started this Iliad project, which uh, we, as OGC, as, are also only helping to build this and, uh, and exploit the, the OGC standards in, in this area. So uh, briefly about this phase two of the, uh, of the marine environment uh, study. Uh, that was focused on this marine, of, on the uh, Baltic area. Uh, here we had uh, support from this Danish uh, government agency, where they were eager to find out how to uh, how to use the OGC APIs uh, to express and expand, and how to use it for the uh, protected areas around the Denmark, and especially this Baltic cross. Uh, and then the uh, the project gets some more some more interest. Uh, we get uh, Enercan to the to the <laughs> to the sponsors, and uh, uh, then we move to the Arctic areas. Where uh, here we work more on the scenario. So there was uh, a scenario of the of the cruise that has the failure in the in the marine environment. That's quite. Uh, hard to reach because of the because of the uh, natural conditions and uh, ice shoals and also because of the connections. So the the idea was to establish the the framework that we can provide the data directly to the decision makers to the uh, agencies that are helping to the rescue team uh, to uh, to use that uh, to use that 
very recent data. And this is just like a snapshot of the one of the implementations of that. But you will see, you see already that that's multi-stage process. So in here we have the uh, these DGGS implementation of the uh, of the Earth's conditions and environmental data. DGS is the idea that you have the uh, unified representation of the globe, which is supporting also the 3D, uh, 3D data, and that's not uh, that's not f uh, let's say um, that doesn't lose the information as we go through the transformations of the uh, of the projections. So the idea is that this is uh, these cells are equal regardless of the, where they are, which is quite important for these arctic areas, which usually in the Mercator are just big pixels. And uh, yeah, through these uh, uh, stages of the, of the pilot, uh, there were a number of the outcomes, naturally. I'm just pointing out very, very few of them. And uh, you see that there were many, many architectures used. So, uh, many implementations, uh, open source and closed, but mostly also open source based, uh, even they were extended a little bit. And there were multiple ways how to connect that data, how to process the observations and expose it through the OGC APIs that are not STA, which is, which is the observation standard. So how to, to express them, for example, in the DGS, but also in the other uh, APIs like, like EDR, for example. Uh, the, this brings the conclusion that really the problem is complex and it can be solved in multiple ways. Uh, that matters if we combine different uh, architectures together and try to uh, work out the common way of, of processing and uh, representing that data. Uh, on the other hand, that was quite good uh, fit for purpose. So uh, that really, uh, well, I guess the sponsors were, were happy because they are continuing the work. Uh, in, the, in this area, and uh, that, that data was really, uh, really useful. And yeah, the last point here is that uh, it also supported this uh, degraded environment when the connection is not, not good. So these APIs are really, uh, really supporting this diverse connection uh, conditions. So as mentioned, there are multiple standards used in this uh, in this pilot, and also uh, there are some outcomes that I will talk in a second. Uh, but there also there are some needs and, and gaps that were identified through this through these pilots. So uh, still the data, <laughs> yeah, the, we have tons of the data, but uh, when you when we want to use that in this FMSDI, it turns out that we have no data. <laughs> So in the end, we are struggling with finding the data at the beginning of the project anyhow. And maybe not in all of the scenarios, but that's quite visible now in this fourth phase where we are working also in the, in the new environments like Singapore, like Caribbean. That's really uh, hard to get through the uh, authorities and, and get the, this data that's, uh, that's really required and that can be converted in these multiple uh, representations. Uh, secondly, the, uh, the standards are, are great because the, uh, they are implemented, they, they enable really accessing the data in different ways, exploring that data. But, but there are multiple implementations and the implementations vary in the details, which means that really we need to try to connect them together to find out if that really works out. So uh, here the idea is to, to, uh, to integrate these different approaches and these different representations. The GGS, which I mentioned, is quite, uh, quite promising. Uh, the, the group is uh, moving forward. That's, uh, uh, that's also struggling with the, uh, with the right data and with the right representations, actually. But that, that's quite promising, especially for these Arctic areas. And uh, also the idea was that OGC is moving towards these APIs. So we are moving from these uh, WXS services to the APIs, which are 
say more modern. They are open APIs based. They are JSON supporting, and uh, that was also the, the pilots that were proving that these standards can be used in the efficient way. And here are the two recent engineering reports that were published. So you will find it on the on the OGC site naturally. There are more insights into that uh, into that. Uh, uh, projects and also the videos. So now we are moving even even more into this persistent outcomes. So in addition to the engineering report, which are very valuable, but uh, you need to go it go through them and really understand that. Sometimes if you just want to pick up some of the ideas, it's easier to uh, just grab the video, and, uh, but also to, to go to the implementations. So now in the current phase, the requirement is to provide these uh, persistent demonstrators that will be lasting after the, the pilot, so we can easily come back to that um, uh, deployment and, and really play with that. And now shift to the Europe project, uh, which is uh, now in in the middle, actually. Uh, so uh, Iliad is uh, is here, and as you can see, this is not the only initiatives in Europe that's building digital twin of the ocean. Actually, the uh, the Iliad is uh, quite different from the others because that's uh, quite bottom up. So it's based on the private and research research resources from the different agencies. So that's the aim is to contribute to this European digital twin called EDITO, uh, and also integrate with the other initiatives like DTDO, which is uh, the, uh, one of the uh, um, Ocean Decade activities uh, under the UN flagship. And uh, here we are supporting to, to contribute, which means uh, to really build the, the, the twins, not only as the models that exist somewhere, you know, in the research agencies, in the, in the academia that are providing some models which are very fancy, but uh, then if we want to deploy it somewhere, it's always a, always a struggle. And also there's an idea to, to use the, the idea of the in, industrial data spaces. So I'm not sure if you are familiar, this is quite, Quite new because it has uh, like three years now. The idea of the data spaces is to enable really the uh, cooperation of different uh, private entities uh, in the in the digital Europe strategy. Uh, so uh, that's not only about the data, the geospatial data. That's about every data, like automobile and whatever you can imagine. Actually, there are now like nine or or, or more. Uh, silos that are building this, these data spaces, and the marine one is, is one of them. So Iliad is also a quite big project, which means we have now something like 25 plus pilots. Uh, they are working in these different areas from the uh, fisheries modeling, so how can we, uh, how can we predict uh, what are the best conditions for the fisheries uh, and for the aquaculture? Uh, there, is, there are several about the pollution, so monitoring the uh, the aqua pollution also in relation with the aquaculture because that's that's all connected. We have just one ocean. That's all of this. Uh, all of these pilots are actually in, in influencing each other, and we are trying to integrate that. Uh, there is a few pilots that are working on the energy. So not only wind energy, but also tidal wave energy. How can we model, how can we predict where the farm should be set up and what will be the outcome of that? And also about uh, harbors. So in this harbor conditions, we uh, will see in a second that we are integrating also 3D data and really supporting this uh, kind of metaverse, actually. Uh, so just, I will present two of them, the two pilots, because they're quite representative, maybe not, not, with, not, not everything is here, uh, but, uh, but already we see that in this uh, aquaculture, we have first uh, observations that are coming from the, uh, from the sensors that the, the partners are setting up. There are some uh, boils, there are some gliders, there are some laboratories that are setting up uh, in here, the example of the Nor uh, Norwegian 
coast. And, and we have also naturally the uh, environmental data that are integrated with that. And we have, oh, that's five minutes. Oh, <laughs> let's go further. Uh, so just uh, as I mentioned this, uh, we are trying to integrate also this 3D data. This is the case of the Varna port, which is actually not one port, but set of the ports that are spread around like 20 kilometers uh, from the bay to the, to the, to the river. And, uh, and the conditions are also not, uh, not convenient because often that there's a fog. You, you see here a small image that is actually VR tool, uh, which is uh, visualizing the, the real hardball, even if, not, if that's not visible. So based on the sensors that's around, based on the 3D model of the hardball, uh, we are helping to, uh, to navigate through that. I mentioned a lot of data. So we are using naturally the observ observation, we are using the sensor data, and this should be the outcomes. So these are the factors that we are trying to, uh, to produce in that. And naturally, uh, because that's multi-actor uh, project, uh, this architecture is kind of idealization. So naturally we have some uh, data providers, we have some engines that are modeling the data and producing new products, uh, but naturally that they are quite various. And, yeah. <laughs> and we have also the layer of the marketplace, which uh, is quite, for me it's kind of orthogonal, but still we need, to, uh, we need to make sure that it integrates together. So we have the APIs that expose the data. Uh, you can find that, but the access to the data is not always open. It's fair, but it doesn't have to be open. And we have identified a number of the APIs that are actually used through the, through the project. So yeah, that's maybe hard to see, but uh, the main things, uh, the main, the main uh, parts are the sensors. Uh, APIs, the features and the EDR, which are somehow connected. But naturally, the, 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 the actors and the, the contributors are using also the different other implementations. So Stack is naturally quite popular. OpenDAP and AirDAP is also kind of uh, widely used, especially among these big, uh, big players uh, in, in the marine data. And again, uh, our idea of the digital twin is that the data is used in this kind of circular economy way. So we are gathering the data, we are modeling that. Uh, we are val validating that, so we know that the data is actually uh, uh, useful, and then it can be used in the other, uh, in the other components. And here we use uh, a lot of, of the processing services and the ADAC architecture from, uh, from ISA that's based on the OGC uh, WPS and now uh, OGC processes that enables really these models to be encapsulated in the, uh, in the application package. And the idea is that this application package can be deployed on the uh, containerized like dockers, for example. So you really uh, have the, the images, you have the configuration, and that's running on this uh, execution engine. So you don't need to uh, uh, host all of that together. And there are a number of configurations that you can do uh, in, this, in this process. This is about the metadata. So if we want to use the data through the, through the process, naturally we have to describe that. So we uh, really need to know how the outcome of the previous model was, was done and uh, is it actually reliable? Is it something that we can use based on our knowledge, based on the accuracy, based on the benchmarks that is, uh, that is providing? And uh, the idea is also to, because of these different APIs, because of these different representations, and because of the different domains, the idea is to, uh, to represent also the, uh, the variables that we are using in the harmonized way. And if you are falling back to the semantics, so uh, the ocean information model uh, will be uh, the ontology that uh, is actually the ontology that's, uh, that's providing these crosswalks between uh, cross-domain standards and domain-specific standards. 
And here you will find some, some of the examples, how can it be used? So for example, we have these very raw data like CSV files, text files from these sensors, or from the, uh, here is the citizen science data about the jellyfish observation. That's going through the triple store that's normalized according to the ocean information model and then exposed through the OGC sensor frame API. Uh, but that was built thanks to our partner. So they actually put the resources and build that, expose the APIs on their own implementations. And we have those multiple open source implementations that are used and we want to promote them. Uh, but we want, don't want to <laughs> change that too much. So in here, uh, you see the, you see the Pygeo, you see the uh, Frost server, they are quite light, so we are using that like a first try. Then we can expand it to, to some more if, if also the, the partners will, will help us with that. But the idea is to put uh, in front of that or integrate it into that, the semantic uplift, so we can actually represent the, for example, take the EDR, yeah? You have the representation of the data, but if we want to know what is the property, like temperature, and where did it come from? And we, if we want to link it to the sensor data, like the observation, <laughs> then the, the idea is to, to put these markdowns and, and really uh, integrate that together, based also on the netcdf files that are in the middle often, and that are also not representing all of the all of the details. Yeah, so we are time, time, time is up. So <laughs> just a small takeaway is that uh, we're trying to build it in a modular way. So uh, really to, to integrate the small pieces together and provide these recipes how this data can be exposed. So we have the implementation, we have the domain specific uh, profile of the ocean information model, then we can expose that. And that's a time is up. So thank you very much. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah so thank you very much for the interesting presentation. Um, are there any questions? Maybe you can repeat the questions so that we get some. Well, the question is uh, what we are doing wrong in terms of, uh, for example, this Iliad uh, idea that we are integrating this, uh, this different software. And sometimes we can integrate the semantic uplift, like in PyGeo there is a support for the semantics. Uh, we are trying that, uh, but I think the, <laughs> there are some needs to transform the data also. Not only to uh, you know, put the context, like uh, put it, turn it into JSON-LD so you can have the context. Not only that uh, we need to build the uh, kind of RDF representation of this EDR payload, uh, but also to change small pieces. So the idea is that you have the properties like here. Yeah, that's uh, that's in a CDF file, but that's pretty much what's visible in the in the EDR. You have the properties like SST, yeah? So that would be the best if we could have the link to the, I don't know, NERC vocabulary that is uh, defining this part, yeah? Uh, I think that's a specific question, but to create like these kinds of pipelines to very small or specific things. Yeah. Okay. Um, specific, very visual, uh, workflow stack, basically. And you can essentially extract it from the jobs, chain them together, and after the data analysis, so you can sort of the transition role. Yeah, that's... Uh, the plug-in little scripts of the set, you transformation in there, and continue on there yeah, thanks, thanks for that. I mean, that's probably the uh, the glue about, between those yeah. steps. Yeah, that's that's uh, uh, that's useful. So now we are working kind of offline, and we are trying to integrate it online. Maybe this is a good idea to integrate it with, through this this workflows. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there are many softwares we can we can try, but that's thanks for the comment. So, are there any other questions? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and commonly use, uh, yeah, here we have the DCAT. And it's in, in, in orange because that's not the standard. So uh, the GEO DCAT is actually in the draft for several years. Uh, but now the uh, geosemantics group uh, is retasked to actually put it into the standard. So there is an effort now to stabilize this GeoDCAT. And uh, yeah, we had the idea to make it like the uh, transversals through the GeoDCAT so we can express different meta, like the catalog data, yeah? So we have the ISO, we have the C data net profile of the ISO. And we have some other, uh, like CSV, we have the records that are also uh, providing that. And there are mappings, which are used usually in the CSV files. <laughs> so uh, we try to make it more, uh, let's say, machine readable. So also to express this, uh, this crosswalks uh, between these different, uh, different, uh, different models. And the GeoDCAT looks like good canonical representation of those. So that, that is that a JSON-LD representation that you expose by uh, Yeah, um, JSON-LD representation will be now based on the, um, uh, on the records, OGC API records which is the features extension, uh, but the ocean information model is representing the cross crosswalks. So it really uses the ontologies uh, that are defining the entities that are used through this whole stuff. Yeah, so if we are extending GeoDCAT in any sense, then we also look for the other definitions of those. Uh, 